All right, guys, welcome back today. We're gonna try to show you guys how we use gymnastic skills, not artistic necessarily, just gymnastics and general skills to transfer it into our friends in the military, law enforcement, firefighters. We have a special guest here today, Rickard Merck from Sweden. He's a part of the Swedish Armed Forces. Is yeah, that correct? That's correct. And uh, he's here visiting San Francisco CrossFit for a month. He's been training and uh, working with us for a while and we learned a lot from him and I hope he's learned something from us as well. And what we want to really do today is just take very basic movements that we see in gymnastics and teach you guys how to transfer this out onto the field. In this case, it's going to be military based and we're going to just see some basic, basic movements and hopefully you can guys can relate a little bit and, and make it happen. So check it out. All right guys, so when you're on the field, from what I've learned, there are some basic positions that you have to review. Standing position, kneeling position, and lying on the ground, either on your belly or on your back. So uh, I just want Rickard to show us a couple of those positions, what it would look like in the field when you have the gear on. And I know there are different shooting positions. I know nothing about this, but Rickard's gonna explain a little bit. So what's your first kind of standing position that you look for when you're, when you're in the field? Standard uh, position is like standing uh, fire position. You have like your chest in front. You want to have the plates in front to protect you, and you stand like this, ready. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So that's just a partial squat, standing, nice and tight. Hopefully, you have some balance and stability, so the shooting. It is. It is. Yeah. You have to have the core stability, you know. Yeah. To keep the recoil. Okay. Then we have the second one. It's like kneeling position. It, it can look different. Yeah. Depending on how you learn it, you know, could have like this, could, could, could go down, you know, to minimize your right, your your um, area, you know, mm -hmm. so the enemy can't hit you that easy. Yeah, that's the second one, and then we have the lying firing position. Cool. So one of the things that you've seen in the field is that uh, we're having a hard time maybe transitioning from one and another of these, and uh, what what is it you find that? That, uh, that's been the biggest limiting factor in these transitions? Is it, is it mobility? Is it just a, a lack of just learning the movement? Or it, is it because you're carrying really heavy gear and it makes it really awkward? Uh, it, it's a mix of uh, everything actually, but I see a lot of guys, they don't uh, actually think about the movements they learn and use them in the field. And um, as well, it's a lack of mobility, it is. Definitely, yeah. definitely. So what we want to try to do is we want to try to do uh, basic gymnastics skill, which in this case we're going to talk a little bit about a burpee. How do we get from the ground to kneeling, from the ground to standing in the most efficient and fast manner possible. Um, so we're going to take the ideal situation of what a CrossFit gymnastics burpee would look like and then we're going to try to translate it into what uh, someone in the military would use like when they have all the gear on and weapons and all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna start with um, just your uh, a bottom position where you're lying down on your belly. Yep. We're gonna imagine that he's lying there with the gun, he's ready to go. You can see that that leg in the back is actually turned out a little bit to the side. Is that because you're looking for more stability, more surface? It is, it is. Yeah. So what would be the basic way of you getting up onto your feet from there if you had to move fast? It would be, I would like it, a, a burpee kind of movement. I would release the weapon, it's linked to me, and I will try to get up definitely. to the feet real quick, as quick as possible. Okay, so you, you're definitely thinking about that burpee transition as, do. as, you're, doing, as you're doing that movement. Do. So, so one of the things that we see is that a burpee is such a simple movement, everyone hates it and dreads it, but it can definitely translate really easily into all these basic survival movements that we have out in the field. So what we're gonna talk about is how do we transition from the ground to that burpee and things to think about as we do that. I know we catch a lot of people kind of sliding their feet, having to step. Can you show us a little bit what we were talking about earlier, how you had a hard time transitioning before? Yeah, a lot of people, they don't have the explosiveness or not thinking enough about the skill. So, so they maybe, they're taking a lot of time, you know, trying to get up using the, the legs and stuff like that instead of minimizing the transition time between the positions and just jump up, explode. Yeah, so you, you're saying that there are a bunch of turning points. It's almost like a parallel parking and having to do like a 10 point turn rather than just two. Yeah, right? Exactly. Cool, so that's what we're gonna do. So in gymnastics, what we talk about, or CrossFit gymnastics, what we talk about when we do the burpee is the following. We have to get into a very strong bottom position. So you're gonna lie down on your belly. So the first thing he's gonna do, we're gonna just talk about ideal situations. So 
feet can be shoulder width apart. What ideally I would want to do in the beginning is flex my feet so I get my toes down and I get a little bit more support. If he's in the field, he would actually drop his weapon before he does anything and he would transition his hands kind of under his armpits. Ideal situation to create the most efficient push-up is actually elbow in position. And this is something we talk about when we're doing our muscle-ups, it's something we talk about when we're doing our dips. This elbow in position is gonna generate more tension in that shoulder, is gonna place you in a better, better position. Head will stay neutral. And all I would wanna do here is to be able to practice a push-up where instead of driving through the shoulders, I'm actually thinking of driving through the belly. So go ahead and do a push-up, but think of driving through the belly. It's not the shoulders that push you up necessarily, it's the belly that drives you. So go ahead and do a couple push-ups just in that position there for me. So push-up, drive through the belly. Push-up, drive through the belly. Cool, go ahead and rest for me. So that would be your first thing. If you can do push-ups thinking of not driving through the arms but driving through the belly, now you're starting to generate some power. So setup is key, elbow in position, belly drives. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna start talking about transition. And this is when a little bit of mobility comes into play. So what we're gonna practice is we're gonna try to explode out of that push-up and tuck our feet in as close as we can to our hands. So what I'm talking about is the following. We're in a push-up position, quick feet down. Notice I had to turn my toes out. It's the early morning, so I'm a little bit stiff. But all I'm trying to look for is flat foot. Elbow in position, push-up through my belly, fast foot that bottom of the squat. See if you can do that without moving your hands. So belly drives, feet come in fast, and just stall right there. Notice that this is just the bottom of your squat, hip crease below the knee, toes are turned out a little bit for now, it's totally fine. Remember we're not loaded, we're just warming up, but we can see that this is a good position, very stable, very controlled. From there all you can do is stand up tall and that will be done. Good. Yeah. Now, yes, that was a fairly fast move, but if we want to get even faster, now we're going to address what the upper body is doing and how we're getting a little drive out of this. So another thing to practice would be back into push-up position and see if we can do a couple of push-ups but get a little lift where my hands actually leave the ground. So do a couple of those push-ups, see if your hands can leave the ground for me. Cool, so a little jumping push-ups, go ahead and rest. When we do those jumping push-ups, it's all about driving through the belly. Yeah. You feel that, you drive through the hips, maintain that body nice and tight, and then you just follow through with a little chest up, release of the hands. Yeah. So the goal is to try to combine these two. Release of the hands, leg tuck in. So what's gonna happen is as he pulls his feet in, the hands are gonna be off the ground, and that's actually gonna set him up into a nice squat. So what we're talking about is push-up, push-up transition. So see if you can handle that. Good job, good job. Something we notice is that, go ahead and rest. We notice is that if you watch him from the side, as he develops speed, he's actually breaking in his back a little bit. And that midline stability that we're breaking or that little pattern that we're seeing that's breaking and not, not being completely yeah. efficient is something we want to work on. So how do we fix that? We put him in a hollow body position. Go ahead and lie down on your back. So go ahead and lie down on your back. So this is what he needs to work on. He needs to work on his hollow where his legs come up. Point your toes, legs straight, arms up, try to reach for your toes. Now we have him completely flat where nothing is coming through that lower back. We want to get his head off the ground, head off the ground, good. He's going to start bringing his legs down without losing that lower back position. It's pressing into the ground. See if he can come further down, further down, further down. He can still hold it. That's where he stops. Now, arms are up. This is almost his push-up position if you look at it. That's where he wants to be stable. Now, the thing is we're moving, so we want to see if he's already shaking a little bit. See if he can rock back and forth without breaking or deviating in distance from his rib cage to his hips. And you'll notice that there's a lot of breaking and stuff, they're shaking, so there's definitely some deficiencies, right? They are. Hard stuff. So, how do we make this movement more efficient? Work on your hollow rocks, make sure that you can put motion into your position, and then translate it back into your burpee. So, go back into the burpee. Let's see if you can think, same thing. Push up, jump, transition the feet through. But as you do that, from ribcage to belly button and deeper, 
tight and stable. Okay, so you're really driving through the belly. Watch his back, belly tight. Better transition. We're still seeing a little deviation. See if you get even tighter. One more time. Drive through the belly. Belly really tight. Start slow and then speed on it. Speed. Way better. Now there was no break and he can stand up tall and we're good to go. I know it sounds like we're very picky, but what happens is if you have to do this hundreds of times throughout a period of time, if you're doing it wrong, you're wasting a ton of energy. And A, uh, you're wasting energy, but B, you're also gonna cause some kind of injury, stress injuries. So these are really simple things and really simple fixes that you can do during training in a controlled environment to make whatever happens in the field a little better. Would you agree? Yeah. Great. Okay.